Hey guys, Dan here again, and welcome back to Ember's Tax Tips number three. Today, we're gonna to be chatting all about VAT. So let's dive right in. Now it's one of the trickier subjects when it comes to tax talk. So I'm gonna be relatively high level in the details and try not to confuse you too much in that value added tax haze. We're gonna to be touching on the four W's. What is it? Why does it exist? When should I register for it? And which scheme should I think about registering for? So we're gonna start with the basics. What even is VAT? Well, it's known as a consumption tax, which means that you, as the end consumer of the goods, or the last person who's purchased the goods, is actually the one who ends up paying for the tax. So to take you through an example of this, whenever you go to Pret and they ask you whether you wanna take out or eat in, if you take out, you actually don't pay any VAT because cold takeaway foods are actually exempt from VAT, but if you eat in, you do. It's essentially charged every time goods exchange hands, and it's the person at the end of that line who foots the bill. Next up, why does it exist? Well, it was created back in the day to improve upon the sales tax that they had at the time. It allowed businesses to claim back the tax all the way along the production of the goods life. It also allowed the government to get their hands on their cash earlier along in that value chain. Which moves us on to our third W. When should you register? Well, you have to register if you earn over 85,000 pounds in turnover for the year. And that's any business, whether you're a sole trader, limited company or partnership, it doesn't matter, you have to get registered. However, in some cases, it can be in your interest to register earlier than you think so that you're not the one who ends up footing that 20% bill on all of your expenses. One of the main things to consider when you're thinking about this is who your end customer is. If that end customer is the public, so you're direct to consumer, then it can sometimes be best to hold off. Otherwise, those sales are gonna be more expensive for that end consumer. If your main customer is a business, so you're B2B, it can be really advantageous to get registered because it doesn't get any more expensive or any cheaper for either of you because you can both claim back that VAT when you sell to each other. And the last W is which scheme should you look at? Now there are a number of different schemes in the UK, but the ones we're gonna be covering now are the standard rate or the flat rate scheme. The standard rate is the most common in the UK because if you buy from a lot of different businesses, you can actually claim back the VAT that you've paid out on those expenses and then charge that through to your end consumer. We're remitting at the end of the day to HMRC, whatever's left over. The flat rate on the other hand is if you're a low cost trader, meaning that you don't spend too much on expenses and you earn under 150,000 pounds a year, this could be more advantageous for you. It's not really designed for startups or those businesses that spend a lot of money on goods and it's more designed for those who are either contracting, one man bands or professional services firms. Let's dive into a quick example of the flat rate scheme. Let's say you're a UX designer and you're charging your client for some work you've just done you'll charge them 20% VAT on that invoice. Although when it comes to doing your VAT return at the end of the quarter, you'll only send through 15.5% if you're in your first year of trading, meaning that you get to keep that 4.5% for yourself to cover off on the expenses that you would have had otherwise. Now, if you're not actually spending too much money on expenses, you can sometimes make money off this. Now, the different rates I've just used and percentages can vary quite a bit, whether you're using the reduced rate, whether you're an exempt rate, and we'll cover off on what all of these mean in a different session. So make sure you subscribe for that one. So that's it for today, and I hope we've cleaned up some of the myths that exist in VAT today, because I know that some accountants still get tripped up by it. Please like, subscribe, Comment with anything that's happening in your tax life and we'll see you next time.